Hello everyone, um, I'm Anup Chiryan, I'm a researcher at Merle, and today I'm going to present our work on 2.5 plus 1D spatial temporary screen graphs for the task of video question answering. This is joint work with my colleagues, Chiori Hori, Tim Marks, and Jonathan Liru. The goal of video question answering is for a machine learning model to provide the correct answer for a question about a video. For example, given a short video clip like this one, And if the agent is asked the question, why did the book drop? We expect an answer like, because the baby kicked it. This is a qualitative result from the algorithm that I'm going to describe in this talk. Usually for video QA tasks, the job of the algorithm is to select an answer from a set of candidate answers. Rather than working with raw visual data, a promising data structure that is commonly used for reasoning tasks is scene graphs. A scene graph decomposes a scene into symbolic entities using the object labels, as well as raw neural, uh, neural representation features for each entity in the scene, capturing various implicit characteristics of that particular object. Disentangling the scene into various components offers reasoning at different levels of abstraction, depending upon the type of questions being asked. There have been applications of scene graphs for, for video reasoning tasks before. For example, with my intern Shiji Kang, we explored spatial temporal scene graphs for visual dialogues in AAAI last year. Scene graphs have been combined with knowledge distillation and graph alignment for video, video captioning and question answering tasks. They have also been used for action recognition and video forecasting problems. The standard pipeline for video, uh, video question answering using visual scene graphs is as follows. First, scene graphs are constructed for every video frame, which is then processed using various graph convolutional operations, producing compact representations that are then used in an inference engine, such as a transformer, to produce or select an answer conditioned on the question being asked. When considering a st standard reasoning pipeline in detail, a few questions naturally arise. Why would we want to compute and process a scene graph for every video frame? Many of the objects in the scene may not move from frame to frame, and thus the graph nodes in such a frame to frame scene graph may be redundant. Will a scene graph in that setup for every video frame to be scalable for long video sequences? Our key insight to the solution is to consider the video as a view of a 3D scene. Thus an ideal and minimalistic semantic representation of the scene would be to transform the video back to the 3D scene. There are several obvious advantages to working with a 3D scene than a video. For example, the redundant graph nodes can be removed and can be mapped to a unique object in the 3D scene. The objects can be disentangled from their views, allowing for reasoning even when they are occluded in some video frame. A smaller graph also implies better and faster training and inference. Leveraging this insight, we propose a video question answering pipeline which we call 2.5 plus 1D scene graph reasoning. Our setup consists of a set of modules for transforming a 2 plus 1D video scene graph with 2D spatial and 1D temporal information to a 2.5 plus 1D scene graph where the 2.5D characterizes pseudo 3D depth of the scene that we use for each pixel alongside their 2D spatial locations. This created 2.5 plus 1D scene graph is used within a specialized hierarchical spatial temporal transformer that fuses the graph node features at various levels to produce new features at multiple levels of semantic abstraction. Finally, these features are combined with question, question embedding and aligned with candidate answers and trained to select the correct answer using appropriate training losses. Now let us get into the details of the steps involved in constructing the, the 3D semantic space for a given video sequence. The first step is to construct a 2D scene graph for every video frame. Note that this step and the subsequent steps for 2.5 plus 1D graph construction are incorporated in the pre-processing stage of the inference pipeline. For every video frame, we run the fast RCNN object detector, which is trained on the visual genome dataset and can detect every commonplace object in the scene. The detector provides a bounding box for an object, its class, and a feature vector representing its characteristics. 
Each such detection forms a node in the 2D scene graph. Now you may ask what are the edges? They are implicit and will be introduced when we discuss a hierarchical transformer later. As noted above, the 2D scene graphs have redundant nodes. How to remove them? The idea is to ground each graph node in a plausible 3D scene. But how do we construct a 3D scene from an arbitrary video? Usually, one needs a static scene, the camera intrinsic parameters, or multiple overlapping views of a scene to construct a 3D scene, which is usually not available for the kind of videos typically used in QA tasks. But do we really need very accurate 3D scene for reasoning? Not really. We only need an approximate idea of where objects and their spatial neighborhood is in a 3D space, which can be done via reasoning just using the 2D scene graphs from every video frame. To get a sense of 3D for every video frame, we run the frames through a 2D to 0 3D mapping using a monocular depth prediction algorithm. We use a recent Vidas algorithm for this purpose, which we found is, a, is very easy to use and produces high quality depth maps. Once we have the pseudo 3D or 2.5D image for every video frame, we ground the 2D detection boxes on these 3D images. We use a 3D centroid of each box to summarize approximate 3D location of each graph node. We call the resultant graph a 2.5D scene graph. So far, we have constructed a 2.5D scene for every video frame using the pseudo 3D depth associated with each pixel. Next, we need to collapse the redundant nodes into unique nodes in the 3D scene. The standard way to do this is to use image registration. However, that requires the, the scene to be static. Thus, we split our 2.5D scene graph for every video frame into two subgraphs. A static subgraph with nodes corresponding to objects that seldom move in videos, such as tables, bed, windows, etc., and a dynamic subgraph for objects that may move, for example, a person or a cup or a laptop, etc. We use registration features extracted from the static object boxes for registration of the, of the frames to create a 3D scene. We use the first video frame as a keyframe and propose to progressively map all other frames to the coordinate frame defined by the first frame. For frames that do not have overlaps with the first frame, such as say short changes in the video, we use the respective frame, first frame from that short and its corresponding coordinate frame. To merge the static graph in the 2D scene graph to unique nodes in the 2.5D graph, we do the following. For all the static nodes, we find nodes that are temporarily close with the same objects and with bounding boxes overlapping, as well as their pseudo 3D locations in proximity. Next, we merge such nodes into their parent graph nodes defined in the earlier frames. Each static object is allotted a single graph node and all other instances of it are merged with it. The frame registration parameters computed on the static nodes are used to transform every graph node into the coordinate frame defined by the first frame. As for the dynamic graph nodes, we cannot really merge these nodes even if they are, uh, they are redundant. This is because these nodes may consist of cues such as action cues or appearance, pose, etc. that may be important for the question answering task. Thus, our idea is to keep the dynamic graph nodes as is. However, dynamic nodes are enriched with additional motion features to capture the dynamics of these nodes. Specifically, we run an I3D action recognition model on the video frames and extract spatio-temporal features from the bounding boxes associated with the dynamic graph nodes. These features thus capture localized motion cues. We augment the ob object features associated with these nodes with the thus extracted motion features as well. So far, we have constructed a 2.5 plus 1D semantic spatio-temporal scene graph with a compact static graph and a motion-enriched dynamic graph. Our next task is to use the 2.5 plus 1D scene graph for video QA, for which we propose a hierarchical 2.5 plus 1D transformer. Note that a standard transformer learns relations between nodes in a graph from data. However, such statistical relations need not accurately capture spatial temporal relationships available with the given test data. For example, if a person picks up a cup in all the video frames in a, in a data set, then person and the person and, and the cup may have a strong correlation in the transformer em embeddings. However, maybe a false, that may be a false correlation 
for a given test video. Thus, our idea is to use the spatiotemporal proximity of the graph nodes as captured by the 2.5 plus 1 D scene graph to modulate the, the, the relationship reasoning in a transformer type architecture. Specifically, in contrast to the standard transformer, we use the 2.5 plus 1 D spatiotemporal locations of the queries and the keys in a multi-head transformer setting. We achieve the, uh, these correlations between the graph nodes via what we call a spatiotemporal kernel attention scheme. To illustrate our main idea, suppose we have a 2.5 plus 1D sync graph as shown here. The, graph, the brown node is a single gra a static graph node, however, has shown replicated, however, is shown replicated in time to illustrate our idea. The green nodes are those corresponding to temporally evolving dynamic nodes. Our spatiotemporal kernel attention produces an attention or an edge between two graph nodes as defined by their 4D spatiotemporal proximity. That is, if two graph nodes are, are close in space and time, they get a high attention score and their features, that is the values in the, in the standard transformer associated with these nodes gets fused when linearly combined as part of the multi-head attention. The attention uh, contains two terms, a spatial proximity term that captures the spatial nearness of two nodes in 3D and a temporal nearness term that captures the temporal smoothness of the object interactions. The two terms jointly capture the spatial temporal proximity of two graph nodes. For example, a person interacting with a cup, the proposed attention will have an increasing score as the person's hand moves closer to the cup in the 3D space and will have a smaller score when it, it moves away from it. This attention along with the motion features associated with the dynamic nodes capture together captures the spatial temporal interaction comprehensively in a, in a latent feature space. The attention scores defined by the kernel K are linearly combined with the respective node features V to produce a new weighted node feature for every fused graph node. Here, the uppercase K denotes the kernel matrix using the kernel function on the right, and V prime denotes a matrix with each column as a node feature for the lowercase letter V. For example, uh, this pink ellipsoid has a feature that combines the, the features of the brown static and the two green dynamic nodes. The kernel attention mechanism is parameterized by the degree of closeness that one wants to capture between the two nodes. This is essentially the scale or the granularity of the interaction. For example, should we attend to the interaction between the fingers of a person with a keyboard or uh, two people talking? The first one would need fine scale, while the latter would need a coarse scale and won't need to reason what the hands of each person were when they were talking. As we do not know what level of granularity would we need to reason about, as we do not yet have access to the question, we compute the kernel attention at multiple scales, parameterized via different sigma bandwidths. We fuse the features from each scale via an MLP and combine it to produce a final set of feature fused vectors for the video. This picture summarizes our proposed hierarchical 2.5 plus 1D scene graph transformer. Our architecture also includes a standard transformer alongside our proposed one. We fused the outputs of each each to be used in the subsequent pipeline. Once we have the fused features of the graph, we are now ready to process these features for answer selection. Specifically, our setup is essentially a standard multimodal multi multi attention transformer, where instead of the input encoder, we use our proposed hierarchical transformer encoder operating on the 2.5 plus 1 D scene graphs. The output encoder uses the question embeddings, and the task is to predict the answer embeddings. These predicted answer embeddings are then matched via cosine similarity to, con to the candidate answer embeddings to select the best answer. We train the model using softmax cross entropy loss, as well as con a contrastive loss between the correct answer and the other answers in a batch. This contrastive loss we found helps learn better and more robust answer embeddings. Now we present our empirical results. We used two recent benchmark datasets for empirically evaluating our um, task. 
Next QA is a recent data set with many higher level QA questions involving why and how questions. Video, uh, AVSD QA is a video dialogue data set built on the charades action recognition data set and contains videos of daily life scenarios. Our uh, results show that our proposed method leads to large margin gains on next QA with a significant three to 4% improvement on average. Specifically, we, are, we fare significantly well on why, how, and location-based questions compared to several recent prior methods. Our method shows promising results on ABSD QA dataset as well. Note that next QA evaluation needs to select the correct answer from five different answers, while ABSD QA needs to select the answer from 100 different candidate answers. However, many candidates in ABSD QA may be redundant, while next QA has been handcrafted has handcrafted distractors as well as easy negatives. Thus, both datasets pose distinct challenges in reasoning and our methods method works well in both. We also updated on the various design choices in our setup. We found that each component in our model has a contribution to the final performance. Specifically, our proposed static and dynamic graphs are important. We also removed the need for the 2.5 graph and instead used only the two, 2D scene graph for pruning. That is, using the bounding box overlap between the nodes for removing the static node redundancy without the use of any depth information. We found that this leads to a suboptimal sub static graph with a performance less by 1%. We also experimented with the number of levels of in our hierarchical transformer. There is an impact in the levels of abstraction that we capture, however, this improvement stops as we go to larger scales. Finally, we check the computational advantage of using 2.5 plus 1D graphs. We find that using our proposed scheme reduced the number of graph nodes by 53% on ABSD QA and 24% on next QA. The larger, num larger number for ABSD QA is perhaps, perhaps because it has more videos with less frame switches and static backgrounds. Note that our scheme selects a new keyframe when this, the scene changes or if the camera moves fast across the scenes, causing little overlap of objects between the, between the frames. This slide shows several qualitative results from the two datasets. Our results are provided, I mean, more results are provided in the supplementary materials. <clears throat> Finally, to summarize, in this talk, we looked at the problem of uh, video question answering using scene graphs. We are reducing the redundancy in the graph nodes. Our key insight being to treat a video as a view of a 3D space and reconstruct an approximate 2.5D scene graph for the 3D space, thus removing the redundant nodes. We built a hierarchical 2.5 plus 1D transformer using our proposed scene graph, where we use the spatio-temporal locations of the query and key pairs for attention. Our results on two recent video QA datasets demonstrate significant gains. Going forward, a more accurate 3D graph could improve our results, for example, say using 3D point clouds. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to meeting you at the post session. Please email me if you have any questions. Thank you.